All right. Good morning, everyone. How are you feeling? Second day, super early in the morning. I'm sure you're super awake at the moment. So come on, give me a little bit of energy. <laughs> Woo! All right, come on, more. All right, now we're awake. So hopefully you had a little bit of coffee. And um, my goal for you at the end of the session is that you're going to experience zero gravity and levitate out of your seats. So that's my promise to you. No, but... Uh, uh, joking aside, I'm super excited today to present the first modular AI chain. And essentially what we do is we launch AI dApps to the fastest programmable data availability layer available today. Now that's a bit of a mouthful and we're going to break it down kind of one by one as we go along with the presentation. So let's talk a little bit about the team's background first because it's important to understand that this is a very, very technical area and it requires a lot of deep expertise in blockchain scalability, in AI, and various other uh, distributed storage topics as well. So you've already heard a bit about my background. I worked for uh, Microsoft before as an engineer, for Bain and & Company, and then for Bridgewater Associates in a portfolio construction department. Before going back to graduate school at Stanford and then starting my first Web2 company, a company called Garten, that I scaled up to about 650 employees, 100 million in contracted ARR, as well as um, uh, 130 million in venture funding raised, and so it was a unicorn company. But I decided to move to a board chair role because my classmate, Thomas, uh, from Stanford basically called me up late 2022, and he said, hey, I invested in this company called Conflux. Ming and Fun are the best engineers and computer scientists I've ever backed. The four of us need to get together and then see if something magical can happen. And so after that meeting, Six months later, I basically came to the same conclusion and I said, Ming and Fun are the best computer scientists I've ever worked with. We need to start something. And so to give you a sense of their background, Ming is a distributed storage systems and AI expert. He wrote some of the first AI algorithms at uh, Microsoft for Microsoft Bing. Um, Fun was actually his intern and that's how they met. Fun has a MIT PhD uh, in computer science and programming languages as well as some research in AI. He has two Olympic gold medals in informatics and is also a University of Toronto professor uh, in computer science. And so I'm uh, super excited about working with all of them. And um, it's uh, needless to say that they've published a lot of really interesting research, a lot of great academic research and uh, top conferences that's won a lot of uh, amazing papers. Uh, amazing paper awards, and so a lot of that research we are actually implementing directly into production as we're building uh, zero G. And so, needless to say, this has garnered a lot of investor interest as well. So definitely very thankful to Hack for being one of our lead investors. But uh, we were very intentional about having a very distributed cap table as well, since this is Web3 and we want to have a big community to work alongside us as we go through this journey of uh, opening up and being the first modular AI chain. So definitely really, really appreciative of our investors. And it almost feels uh, insane to say that we were 20x oversubscribed and we uh, raised the 35 million pre-seed. But um, it just shows that A, the team, the market, and uh, kind of the fundamental idea are really, really important for the future of Web3. And so what is the problem that we're fundamentally solving? So storage and storage speeds are a million times too expensive and too slow on Ethereum today. And so that's a big issue because if you wanted to store a gigabyte on Ethereum today, which actually is not that large, first of all, you can't technically. Second of all, it would cost you $60 million. And so how can you run any type of AI or high performance applications on chain when this is the reality today? Um, and so that's where really we come into the play. And so most of that gas cost and that expense is actually happening at the data availability layer. And I'll explain in a second what that means. You may have heard of companies like Celestia or EigenDA. Um, and if not, uh, you're not the only ones because it's actually a very confusing space. And so some people are saying, well, if you don't understand what Celestia is, it's just like Dropbox for blockchains. Um, even that analogy doesn't make sense. So let me actually explain what data availability is. So, so if you think about kind of blockchains, you've got generally this idea of monolithic chains. So like Ethereum and Solana, and they do a few things together. So execution, consensus, 
data availability, settlement, and they're all based on a kind of hardware layer as well. And so what we're introducing is an AI modular stack where every one of these components is essentially separated. So you've got a separate execution component like an L2, um, and then we've got the data availability, which we're breaking out into data publishing, data storage, and consensus mechanism. Uh, and then we have a settlement layer, which uh, in many cases will be uh, an Ethereum L1, or it could be a Bitcoin L1. Um, doesn't really matter, we're chain agnostic, but a lot of our early customers are on the Ethereum ecosystem. And then the one difference as well on the hardware layer is that there's a lot of GPU compute that's necessary for running some AI models as well. And so what's the impact of not having really fast data availability available? So let's go back to this core problem of data being too expensive and too slow. So imagine if you now have a modular world and you've got all these execution layers, let's say you have 100, 1,000, you know, 100,000, doesn't even matter, and you want to process a lot of transactions at the same time. Imagine processing 10 million transactions a second. Well, the data bandwidth you need is five gigabytes per second. Today's best-in-class data availability layers can only do 10 megabytes per second. We're many, many orders of magnitude off before this becomes a real reality and we can actually run some really interesting high-performance applications like on-chain AI, on-chain gaming, high-frequency DeFi. And so that's the future that we see. That's the future that we enable with Zero-G. And let's talk a little bit more about the AI world as well. So many trillions of dollars of economic value can be unlocked through AI. But if we can't run AI models in the Web3 context, we're absolutely going to miss the boat in Web3. And it's my fundamental belief that every company in the next five to 10 years will be an AI company. It's just like saying, hey, I work on the internet, or I work in AI. It will just be part of the daily activities of companies. And so what if we miss the boat and what if centralized AI companies take over our lives? Um, imagine a future where, let's say, five, ten years from now, you've got AI models running production systems, manufacturing systems, administrative systems, and that in a public context. Do you feel comfortable being, having these models be owned by centralized entities? Wouldn't you want to know what's the training data that went into the model? What choices is the model making? Like, who actually owns the model? What version of the model am I actually running? Um, can't do any of that today. You don't know if OpenAI is serving you, um, you know, the latest model, or uh, they're testing something different on you, um, or they've uh, already pre-tested, you know, GPT 4.5. Um, you don't know which model you're running today. You can't publicly verify. You also don't know what the training data was. And so, how do we put an AI model into a context where the AI model can't cheat. And that's where I really see blockchain and AI really combining, to give it an environment where it's the AI model is always making choices for the best of humanity. And so that's the future that I envision. And our mission at Zero-G is to make AI a public good. And so we foresee this mission so that we can create lots of prosperity, so that we can make the statement true where many trillions of dollars of economic value can be unlocked. And so let's talk a little bit more about this particular use case. So how do you do this today? So there's a few ways of implementing on-chain AI. There's ZKML, there's OPML, there's TEML, which is just evolving. But let's use OPML, which is an optimistic machine learning model. So first what you have to do is you store the model on chain and then you serve the decentralized inference traces to do inference. So now imagine you've got a million users. Each one of them has an inference request every minute and you want to serve those decentralized inference traces. Well, again, you need a DA capacity of 1.6 gigabytes per second, many orders of magnitude more than what's available today with best-in-class systems. Let's take a look at another use case, on-chain gaming. So we're partnering with Blade Games, and I won't run through all of the kind of calculations, but there's a bunch of traces that are generated, and that then results in certain types of storage for state updates. And so even at 5,000 daily active users, you need a DA capacity of 16 megabytes per second. That's uncompressed, and so you can do some compression and so on, but even 60 megabytes per second at very low user counts are beyond the capacity of today's DA systems. Imagine a million users, imagine 100 million users. 
So for example, like Epic Games, um, you know, Fortnite, hundreds of millions of users, right? How are we going to bring that on chain? How are we going to bring that game logic on chain? Not possible today. So that's really where we come in. And there's many other use cases in this space as well. So in the future, RWAs, high-frequency DeFi, FHE, all will require very large data pipelines for them to actually work on chain. And so I'll walk you through a little bit how the architecture works. It's quite uh, technical, but I'll just give you the high level. So essentially, we start on the left side with a um, DA blob. We then chunk that DA blob through erasure coding. We put those erasure coded chunks onto the storage network. And we don't do it to all nodes, just a few nodes, which then enables this aspect of horizontal scaling. As that is happening, we write validity proofs and KGG commits to the consensus side. The consensus then, instead of um, in other architectures where you use light nodes to do data availability sampling, here the consensus itself does the data availability sampling. And so what that means is once it's basically sampling consistently the chunks to then determine is this actually available? Is this block actually finally there? Once it establishes that property through consensus, then we take um, that result and we become attestable to the underlying layer one or Ethereum or Bitcoin, wh whatever that layer one is um, that's underlying this. And so the core insight behind this architecture is that we basically segment data into a data storage and into a data publishing lane, which then creates a large um, horizontal scaling ability for the system. And so what are the end results of this? This results in 50 gigabytes per second on a custom consensus, which is 50,000 times faster than today's systems or best-in-class systems at a cost that's 100x cheaper. So different DA layers charge anywhere from 4 to 14,000 per gigabyte per month. We would be at a cost of $50. And so this is a major breakthrough because now you don't have to worry if I need to implement this particular application in a centralized context because you can say anything can be built on chain now. And so this is super fundamentally exciting. It's going to be a major breakthrough once all of this gets released. So, but we don't stop there. There's a lot of other innovation that we want to bring to the space. So one aspect of this is programmability. Because we have a storage network, what you can now say is like, instead of having 30-day um, data pruning guarantees um, in other DA systems, you can say, oh, I actually want to store this data for much longer periods, or I want to store this data indefinitely. And you can also determine what storage type, where it's stored, um, and then also how, what security guarantees you want, how much replication you want throughout the system. None of this customization is open on any other DA layers. And this is really the first time you get this programmability. In fact, what you can do is, on any chain, there could, there's a, we can uh, create a smart contract where you just dump all of your state through that smart contract, and then you can load that state at any point in the future. So, for example, if you have a game that all of a sudden has you know, 100 terabyte of state that can't be handled on chain, easily offload it, load it again. You could even save it on one chain, load it on another chain. Um, so there's, there's a lot of really cool use cases that can come out of this programmability. And we don't stop there. So what we've also figured out in our research is that not only can we scale the nodes horizontally, we can also scale the consensus layers horizontally. And so what that in effect gives you is just like in a centralized environment like AWS, um, where you can just create a new server and then you have more scalability, here we can create new consensus layers indefinitely to give you infinitely scalable data availability. And then one of the things we can also do is to bootstrap the economic security through restaking with Eigenlayer and Babylon and Dopamine and other types of services so that um, you have economic security built in per consensus layer. And the other thing we'll do is that each of these native gas tokens will basically map them to an ERC-20 token so liquidity is very easily movable into the system as well. And so that's another major innovation for, in effect, having infinite DA capacity. What this then also enables you is to say, OK, well, chain like Polygon or Arbitrum, we can give you dedicated DA capacity. Do you never want to run out of DA uh, space? OK, great. We'll give you 5 gigabytes or 50 gigabytes, whatever it is that you need. And this is especially important if your gas costs can never change. 
For example, if you're a high-frequency DeFi uh, application and your market makers require your um, gas costs to be infinitesimally small and they can't increase because it destroys the business model, this is a way to solve it. So you can now give dedicated DA capacity as well. And on top of that, we're also working on aggregated DA. And so the benefit of this is 100% uptime guarantees. Let's say one of these systems fails. Let's say you're using Celestia today. Then you can easily implement this aggregated DA layer, and you have lots of fallback options. So say one system fails, that also means that your blockchain basically goes down if you're an L2. You no longer have data availability. So what good is the system if it's going down, right? So this basically ensures 100% uptime and uh, also creates a very kind of collaborative Web3 spirit because we can work with all of the other DA layers that are on the market to give not only infinite DA capacity, but 100% resilient DA capacity as well. And so what do we make of all of this? This was my attempt at a super nerdy joke. And when I showed this to my investors, none of them laughed. It wasn't funny. And uh, <laughs> they basically told me, you should uh, try to figure this out and, and, and not even show this to anybody. But I did it anyways uh, for self-deprecating humor. So this is how my brain thinks. But basically, all this means is that if you sum all of the consensus layers, you add the storage layer, you add the aggregation layer, it basically leads to AI modularity squared. And so. Yeah, so as, as I can tell, none of you are laughing. So that's why, luckily, the community came to the rescue and said, Michael, you're way too nerdy. Here's what you should have actually shown. So, <laughs> so uh, thanks to our community, they rescued me again. So love, love, love our community. They're amazing. So if you haven't checked out our Discord channel or our X, please go and, uh, and check it out. We have lots of memes. And so let's go back to the AI use case again. So what are the key steps of part of uh, an on-chain AI process? So we've got these different layers. We've got data collection and provenance in the beginning. We've got data cleaning. Then we've got the data infrastructure pieces. So we spent a, a bunch of time talking about that. So storage, DA, consensus, all of that is really critical. Then we have an execution layer. That's where all the inference is happening. That's where the fine tuning is happening. That's where eventually model training can actually even happen on chain. That's where your AI agents will be, your smart contracts that host AI agents, and many, many other use cases, ZKML, and so on. And that's all fundamentally supported by a GPU and networking hardware layer. And then, of course, you'll have all the really cool AID apps that will be built on this infrastructure. So we really live in the middle. We support the data infra. And through lots of partnerships, we will help and support the ecosystem on all these other dimensions. And so this is a bit what it looks like. So of course, we've got layer twos that will use us. We've got some layer ones that will use us for stage snapshots. But we've also got a bunch of AI kind of use cases, gaming use cases like uh, Blade Games or like public AI, magnet AI, social scan that are going to be working with us. And then, of course, we've got the kind of hardware providers like Ionet, Caldera, and then the restaking pieces as well. So we're building a pretty uh, burgeoning ecosystem. So definitely encourage you to uh, build on top of us and uh, explore uh, collaborations with us as well. So let's talk a little bit about the roadmap. We actually just released today our public testnet, so I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, we did a big PR campaign around it, and so mainnet phase one, we're planning for uh, Q2 after this, so we're trying to move super, super rapidly. Um, we have to do it in phases, because phase one will not have our custom consensus yet. That'll come in phase two. And then the infinitely scalable DA will also come in phase two. But until then, we'll work on aggregated DA, the programmability aspect. And then as we go to phase three, we'll give uh, a lot more deeper AI support, uh, maybe figuring out what uh, model staking or model marketplaces actually look like. And so we're super excited about this particular roadmap. And of course, there's a lot of community things. So we're going to be doing um, incentivized test nets. We've already done a points program on a lot of the social campaigns um, and lots, lots more to come there. We'll have uh, ecosystem funds. We'll be doing accelerators, AI launch pads as well. So lots of exciting news will be coming out from, from us in the coming weeks, months. So do follow us on our social channels. So let's talk a little bit about the testnet. Um, 
I definitely didn't expect the take up that we got from the public testnet. We did a soft release on Discord on Saturday, and within two hours, we ran out of all of the testnet tokens. And so I actually got a lot of emails from some of the validators saying, like, can I please invest so you can put me on the incentivized testnet? And so um, that, that was uh, kind of a long weekend uh, for us, but super fun. So uh, public testnet is essentially ready, and I'll give you some uh, documents to also basically look at. So if you scan this one, this is our Notion page on the left-hand side, where you can basically uh, have a quick start in terms of everything you need to get started on our testnet, to get started building, to get started uh, providing storage, to get started using the DA, to become a validator node, all of that's in there. Um, we're also recruiting, so we have a form. So if you're interested in working with Zero-G, please fill that out. And then finally, on the right-hand side is my uh, Twitter slash X. So please do follow me. And then we've got, of course, our website, our Gitbook, our Discord, um, as uh, links down there. So do follow us. We're super excited to build with you and join us in making AI a public good. So thank you very much for having me. Woo!